Austin is in our clinic to pick up his new Tammy 2 braces. He most closely relates to our hyperextension patient category. The therapist was hoping to see, after some habituation, that Austin can demonstrate more successful control of his knee in the sagittal plane as a result of the resistance to plantar flex positions that the TAMI-2 provides. We wanted to optimize the daily wearing experience for Austin, and our feeling is that the polyethylene liner represents the least bulky option, which still allows us to give precise and flexible control of the foot within the more rigid and structured framework required for the Tamarack hinges of this design. This fit looks good. The toe strap that we see in this video is an optimization used to help control forefoot abduction. After placing the toe rise, I do an overall length adjustment. Expect approximately one half of an inch of growth room when the patient is standing. You'll see me adapting the toe rise by heating it with a heat gun, which actually makes it soft. I then shape the softened foam with my fingers to fine tune the shape of the surface under Austin's second, third, fourth, and fifth toes. You will also notice in this video that I'm flaring the back of the heel area slightly. It was noticed at the time of initial fitting that the trim line might be a little aggressive in this area. Upon further walking, Austin reported that he was feeling some discomfort in his navicular areas. Austin's naviculars are quite prominent, even when his foot is corrected. So it's not surprising that in the brace, he needs a more specific contour. This is a little bit challenging to adjust in that the instep strap, D-ring, is riveted to the frame of the brace, very close to the area we we're trying to adjust with heat. So the first step, in gaining access to this area is to remove the rivet and the D-ring. This allows me to heat the plastic and push the frame out. I also trim down the frame to remove some of the structure in the navicular area. The purpose here is to allow the polyethylene of the inner liner to flex slightly as it accommodates pressure from the navicular. So my goal is, in fact, to have the relief be adequate, but fairly specific. I have to reapply the strap. In this video, I'm using the riveting bar that's in our orthotica lab. Out in the clinic, I actually carry a steel trailer hitch, which I can hold inside the brace as a riveting bar. I would have to say that my assessment of the initial walking in these braces was not very positive. Remember that our goal was to reduce or eliminate the hyperextension that Austin likes to use at mid-stance. The initial view from the side, walking in the parallel bars, shows dramatic hyperextension, and he's moving through the resistance provided by the Tamarack hinges fairly consistently. This was his first fitting in these braces, and he has not adjusted to the stability that the braces are providing and adapted his walking to this new situation. I noticed that in the video where Austin is in the hallway, the hyperextension seems to be somewhat reduced compared to the side shot. This partly could be that the camera is now in the sagittal plane and it's much harder to see hyperextension when you're in the sagittal plane as an observer. But it also could be, and hopefully is, that he's starting to accommodate and use the stability provided by the braces with his own voluntary control to soften his knee position at mid-stance. It will take approximately three to four weeks of continued use before we can make a final assessment of whether the balance between the brace controlling his hyperextension and Austin being challenged to control it himself is in fact appropriate. 